Well, good morning to Pastor John at James River and to uh, Pastor Mac and Buford Road and all those joining us with uh, Facebook Live. God is good. And all the time. Well, it was a day after Christmas and Pastor Steve was out on the church lawn uh, just looking over again and kind of admiring this uh, large nativity scene they had put out there on the lawn for people driving by to witness. And uh, he noticed while he was looking at it, and these were large figurines, he noticed uh, that baby Jesus was missing. And he thought to himself, you got to be kidding me. I mean, who would come up in here and take a, a large size figurine from a nativity scene? And who, who would take baby Jesus overall? And he stood there and he found himself getting more angry. And as he did, he looked up and lo and behold, he saw um, little Jimmy. Jimmy was coming down the road with a brand new red wagon. And guess who was in the red wagon? <laughs> baby Jesus was. So uh, Pastor Steve walked over to him and said, well, so let me ask you something, Jimmy. Where'd you get Jesus from? He said, well, I got him right over there from that scene right there. And Pastor, still a little perturbed, he looked at him and said, well, why did you take him? And uh, all of a sudden, Jimmy got really serious and he said, well, here's the truth. He said, uh, about a week before Christmas, uh, I came over and I prayed to, to baby Jesus and I said, look, if you'll get me a little red wagon, I will come back and take you for a ride around the block. <laughs> You know, it's a cute story, but I got to tell you, uh, if we're not careful, it can symbolize what we, we don't want. And that is that we turn the celebration of the birth of Christ uh, into a Santa Claus Jesus, right? That we somehow negotiate with Jesus about what we want at Christmas time. That if we're not careful, it becomes about our birthday, your birthday, my th birthday, instead of it being about his birthday. That if we're not careful, the birth of Jesus and the narrative of that becomes really more about the, the economy of money and, and the elusive perfect gift that we're all out to buy because if we can just do that, it will be a perfect uh, Christmas. And that if we're not careful, we help this culture take Jesus and turn him into the patron saint of fourth quarter earnings. And so because of that, we're on this journey. We're going to be re re revisiting this journey of, of Advent conspiracy. We're conspiring against a culture that because of where they're taking people, they've actually taken Christ out of Christmas and we want to detach ourselves from that and not be a part of that because we're not looking to create this kind, some kind of magical Christmas experience by everything being perfect, right? We're not trying to, to recreate this idea that, that, that society sells us that if you just buy the perfect gift for the perfect person, it'll be a perfect day. We're saying, no, we're not going to be like the world. We're not going to run ourselves into the ground physically emotionally, mentally, financially. We're not going to run ourselves into the ground spiritually over doing Christmas the way the world would have us do it. And what it means is we're not falling for what the marketers claim, if you will, that it's necessary to make Christmas the one perfect day in a less than perfect year. That we understand this is a celebration, as I said a moment ago, not of our birthday, but of Jesus' birthday. And so we were challenged last week to let us become the miracle through whom God shows up this Christmas as we become His hands and feet. And we understand being a miracle, being a part of that, there's a cost to that. And so the challenge is, are we willing to, give, to pay that price? Are we willing to give ourselves away sacrificially? So today we continue this journey to conspire against culture who, who with, whether they know it or not, are kind of kind of sucking Jesus out of Christmas, if you will, the real reason for the season here. And we're fighting to make sure that, that we keep him in our hearts, that we don't go looking for him at the mall, but that he's in our hearts and our minds and our soul as we seek to, to celebrate his birthday. And in order to do that, I want to call us back to the story. This narrative of the birth of Jesus is so powerful that it can cause us to, to really be in awe of the, really, the real miracle it is. But here's the problem. we got to fight against our insensitivity. We have read this story every year all of our life. We've heard it preached every year of all of our life. And if we're not careful, we miss the whole power of it and we just, well, we just sanitize it. We clean it up to the point that it really doesn't speak to us anymore. Think about this manger scene with me for just a moment here. Our culture really has hijacked what was really a very harsh reality around the manger and made it some beautiful Christmas card. I mean, really, how many Christmas cards have you gotten of the nativity scene? And, and there it set this beautiful 
a, a dark sky with, the, with the, 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 the stars that are so brightly shining and, and then your eyes fall down to the nativity scene and there's just this perfect peace there and this, the song comes back to your mind, the cattle are lowing and the baby Jesus, uh, you know, he's asleep, no crying he makes. I talked about that last week. Let's stop here for just a moment and do a reality check. He was born in a stable. A stable where animals are kept. It could have been a little cave, it doesn't matter. It is a place where animals were kept and we have no reason to believe that animals weren't in there when they arrived. And you know as well as I do where there are animals, there's dung. And where there's dung, there's a scent. And with that scent comes flies. And so there, baby Jesus, let's not kid ourselves that Mary and Joseph weren't having to swat the flies away from baby Jesus' face. That they weren't having to shoo the flies away from what they were eating together as a family there. Let's not sanitize the fact they were tired and exhausted having run for their lives and arriving in this place where there's animals breathing down their necks. Listen, here's the reality of, of the stable. Here's the reality of that scene. It was a mess. That's what it was. It was a mess. We don't know till later, or we know now because we know the whole story. It was a holy mess, but it was a mess. It was not a Christmas card birth scene. Not like what we're used to. We've cleaned it up. I'll never forget one year Paul and I, we got a, uh, this was back in the days of the, you know, the, the scratch and sniff. We got a scratch and sniff Christmas card. It was a, if you want to smell what Christmas smells like, scratch here. So we scratch it. Smells like one of those uh, Fraser furs. You know what I'm talking about? Just, whoo, what a tree, right? I told Paula, we ought to do a real scratch and sniff card. <laughs> oh, y'all know where I'm going? That's right, the stable. Scratch and sniff this. That make you think of Christmas? But it would be real. Can I get an amen? amen. Not what you and I have created, not what culture has given us. Violins were not playing in the background. Oh, holy night. He was born into a mess. What was God doing? What was God doing when He chose to come, Emmanuel, God with us in His Son, Jesus Christ, into a stable, into a mess? It causes me to think I, I can so easily miss God, if I think I can find him in the mall rather than a stable. In the stinking mess of life. But, but wait, if that reality doesn't stir you up, just give me a moment. Let's just go back and look at the, the characters. We got Mary. And the angel says to Mary, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You found favor with God. Don't be afraid. Don't, I, don't be terrified. To, Mary said, how will this be? I'm a virgin. That word virgin in the original language, understand it has two meanings. One, yes, she had not had sexual relations with anyone yet, but it also refers to her age. She is pubescent. She's somewhere between 12 and 15. Hello, church. We have a 12 to 15-year-old young girl who is now being told you're going to become pregnant. And it's going to be made possible by God. But don't worry. Don't be afraid. You found favor with God. You talk about a mess. Mary's, I, we don't know where Mary is from 12 to 15. What, is she, what could she possibly be thinking uh, physically? What could she possibly be thinking mentally, emotionally, much less theologically? I mean, has she gotten to a point where she says, oh, I'm, I'm so good with this. God's got this. All of a sudden, from 12 to 15, you talk about a mess. The reality is Mary in just, just a little bit has to sit down and tell her parents, hey, Mom and Dad, i got good news. I'm pregnant. You, you be what? <laughs> pregnant. And no, it's not Joseph's. Well, whose is it? God's. Seriously. You, you talk about a mess. And, and if that's not enough, then she's got to tell her fiancé, hey, Joseph, I'm pregnant. If we're going to maintain any truth, any truth whatsoever in celebrating Jesus' birthday, then we cannot cleanse the messiness right out of it. We have to find a way, excuse the expression, to scratch and sniff because it's a mess. Thank God he makes it a holy mess, but we don't know that till later. 
perhaps that is the theme of celebrating this Christmas is that God shows up in the mess. Yours and mine and ours. Because like Mary, we too are favored. We belong to God. He loves us. And you know as well as I do, being favored by God does not mean that our lives won't get messy. It does not mean that they're going to be neat and predictive somehow. We know better. We know, if not already, our lives stink sometimes. John 16 says, but I I truly tell you, Jesus speaking... It is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come. But if I go, I will send him to you. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. And so God sends the Holy Spirit, the miracle of Christmas. Every time we turn around, God shows up in the power and the movement of the Holy Spirit. That's the miracle of being born again every day. God shows up just like Jesus did into your mess and my mess every day. Now here's the amazing thing. This 12 to 15 year old girl, after she finds out she's impregnated by God, by the Holy Spirit, she's going to have a child. Nothing like what my response would have been. We have in Luke 1, 46 through 49, what's become known as Mary's song. You know what she does? She worships. She worships the mess she is in. In other words, she takes her mess and it becomes her message. Hello. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for He has been mindful of the humble state of His servant, and from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is His name. Can you imagine getting your life turned completely upside down? This is a 15-year-old poor pheasant farm girl who is living on her existence on the fringe of the mighty Roman Empire, who's just had an encounter with the Holy Spirit, who tells her you're going to have a baby even though you've never slept with anyone, and her response is she glorifies the Lord. Wow. I'm not sure that when my life is a mess, that's my response. If, if one were to summarize what Mary did, as I said, she, she made her mess, her message. She took what was given to her in this life and she leaned into it. She took this reality that was now her life and went with it faithfully. And God was glorified. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, that can be the miracle that you and I and this church, our church, and all of God's people experience this Christmas when we choose to make our mess a message. God shows up. We give testimony to whatever is going on in our life and give thanks to God. But let's not just forget, it's not just Mary. There's Joseph. <laughs> Joseph, your fiance is pregnant. It's not yours. Can you imagine his heart, his mind, his soul screaming? What do you mean you're pregnant? What do you, what do you mean it belongs to God? What do you mean? I, listen, quietly, quietly it says in his mind, I got to break this thing off. I got to be done with her. I don't know what's going on, but it's not right. I'm out of here. And an angel shows up and says, hey, Joseph, don't do that. Don't do that. You know what Joseph does? He obeys. He sticks with Mary. Let's be clear. Joseph is in a mess. And he chooses to trust God in the middle of all of it. And all of a sudden, his mess becomes his message. You beginning to see the theme? The nativity was a mess. Later it would become a holy mess. Could that be our story? That when we're in a mess, we invite God in and He shows up. And through the miracle, the birth of, well, Himself, Jesus, maybe our mess can become our message. Maybe that's how we'll experience Real peace. 
not the kind of peace the world offers in a void of conflict, but only the kind of peace that God can offer, a contentment with where we are. So let's look for God in our hearts and not in the mall. Let's claim our mess and allow it to become our message because it's at that point we'll start to worship. Pray with me. God, forgive us. We've read this story so many times. We've heard it preached. We have sung this story so many times. For many of us, we've become numb to its message. Forgive us. And fathers, we come to you today. I I hope we'll be asking ourselves, what's what's going on in our life? What's, What's the mess? And how can you, God, show up in it? How can we claim your presence in it? And let it become our message. Is is it a relationship we're in? Is it it a relationship with our spouse? Is it a mess? A child, a grandchild, a, a sibling, a neighbor, a co-worker, a friend? Is our mess financial or are we, are we sitting here knowing that Christmas means more unresolved debt and, or, or that we feel woefully inadequate because we don't have the kind of money we need to buy the perfect gift to make it a perfect Christmas? Is that our mess? Or maybe we're just an emotional mess. Could be grief. We could be in a mess because we're missing someone so terribly bad right now. The void feels incredibly empty. And we look around and people are singing Christmas carols and, 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 and frantically shopping and, and all we want to do is sit down and cry. Father, help us. Help us to claim our mess and turn it into a message because of your presence. It really can be a perfect Christmas in the sense that you know what we need, in the sense that you're going to show up and we'll be able to worship. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. For I was born into a mess. Amen.